Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Hello all, firstly let me introduce myself My name is Zara Dusadia from class TBI 4C And I'm making this video in order to fulfill my first assignment in public speaking and debate class The story I'm about to tell you is a tragic tale of Daedalus and Icarus In mythological ancient Greece on the island of Athens there lived a man named Daedalus and his young son, Icarus. Daedalus was just an ordinary man except for one special talent. He was an inventor of strange and wonderful mechanical creations. He invented carpentry and all the tools used for it. He designed the first bathhouse and the first dance floor. He made a sculpture so lifelike that Hercules himself mistook them for actual men. Though skilled and celebrated, Daedalus was egotistical and jealous, worried that his nephew was a more skillful craftsman. Daedalus murdered his nephew, and as a punishment, Daedalus was banished from Athens and made his way to trade with his son Icarus. Preceded by his storied reputation, Daedalus was welcomed with open arms by Crete king Minos. There, acting as the palace technical advisor, Daedalus continued to push the boundaries. He invented the ship's sail and mast, which gave humans control over the wind when sailing. And with every creation, Daedalus challenged human limitations that had so far kept mortals separate from gods, until finally, he broke right through. One day, the queen of Crete, Pasiphae, was being cursed by the god of ocean, Poseidon, to fall in love with, with one of the king's prized bull. And through this rather disturbing relationship, born a half-man and half-bull monster known as the Minotaur. Couldn't bear to see the Minotaur, who was actually his child, nor kill him. King Minos then approached Daedalus to ask if he might be able to invent something less pretty but more useful. A few moments later, the inventor presented the plans for a giant labyrinth to hold the Minotaur. Daedalus made the maze so complicated that anyone who entered it would be lost. King Minos was very pleased with the result. Unfortunately, King Minos was also very greedy. He didn't want Daedalus to spoil the secret of the maze, so he locked Daedalus and Icarus within the top of the tallest mountain on the island where they were to remain for the rest of their lives. The only entrance to the tower were through uh, the labyrinth guarded by the king's soldiers and the minotaur and an opening on the rooftop of the tower overlooking the sea high up on the side of a cliff. Daedalus didn't mind his imprisonment at first because King Minas provided whatever he needed without question. Years flew by until young Icarus became a teenager. Daedalus didn't want such an isolated life for his son, so he started to think of ways to get out of the tower. The next time King Minos visited, Daedalus approached him nervously. Your Majesty, surely you must see that Icarus is becoming a young man. You can't plan to keep him locked away for his entire life. Please, sire, let him join your royal guard and seek a life in your service. The king raised an eyebrow and stared thoughtfully at the opening of the tower. I shall consider your request. In reality, the king didn't really have to think long about it. He knew right away that he didn't want to let either Daedalus or Icarus go. Who could know whether Icarus would have his father's talents? After all, Icarus had watched and learned from his father for his entire life. Under no circumstances did he want another kingdom to get their hands on the mechanical wonders Daedalus created and that Icarus might 
someday produce. One day, Tigala stood staring out the opening of the tower of locking the sea, watching the waves crash on the rocks below and the seagulls circle over the cliffs. Icarus walked beside his father and softly said, How I envy those baby birds, for soon their wings will be strong and they'll be able to fly away from this wretch cliff. It gave him an idea. Wings he needed wings to escape. For many days, Icarus carefully gathered every feather he could reach. While Icarus was busy with feathers, Tegos created thin tubes of light metal which he used to form the frame of two pairs of man-sized wings. <coughs> he used leather strips to create a harness and pulleys to allow the wearer to flap and tilt the wings in various directions. Then he took the feathers that Icarus had collected and used candle wax to begin to attach the feathers to the light metal frames. And a few weeks later, Didalus declared the wings complete. The day they were to leave, Didalus lectured Icarus one last time. Now son, remember, you must be cautious when we fly. Fly too close to the ocean and your wings will become too heavy with water that sprays off the waves and fly too close to the sun and the wax will melt and you will lose feathers. Follow my path closely and you will be fine. Icarus nodded and excitedly slid his arms into the harness. He listened absently as his father explained how to open the wings wide to catch the air currents and how to use the pulleys to steer. With an eager hug good luck, Daedalus and Icarus stepped into the entrance of the tower overlooking the sea, spread their wings wide as they would go and lift one after another and into the sky. Icarus flies close to the sun as if it had been waiting for him. The wind caught Icarus' wings almost immediately and up he soared. Oh, what freedom! threw his head back and laughed as he flew higher and higher to the sun, ignoring his father's shout and warning from below him. Tiddles shouted to his son to be careful, stop playing with the birds and follow him towards the shore of an island in the distance. But Icarus was having too much fun. He was tired of always following his father always listening to his endless lectures and Icarus was thrilled with this sudden freedom. He watched the seagulls rise on the air currents high up over the sea and thought to himself, careful, the birds aren't careful, they're happy, they're free. Oh what a glorious adventure this is. The sun is so warm and the breeze tucks at my wings as if even the wind is happy. I'm finally loose. I can't believe I've been missing this for all these years trapped in that cold damp tower. And with that, he followed the seagulls up and up and up into the sky. No, Icarus, stop, shouted Daedalus. The wax will melt if it gets too warm. Not so high, not so high. But Icarus was too far away or too lost in his own happy thoughts to of excitement to listen to his father's warnings. As he flew still higher, he began to feel the warm wax dripping down his arms and saw feathers pulling like snowflakes around him. Remembering his father's lectures, Icarus realized with horror his mistake. He began to walk the pulleys to tilt his wings back down towards the sea, but as he did so, he saw more feathers drift away and he began to lose height more quickly than he wanted. Working the pulleys even more frantically, Icarus flapped the wings trying to slow his fall but the harder he flapped, the more feathers detached from the frame of his wings. As Daedalus watched in horror, 
Icarus plunged toward the sea, frantically flapping the police with his arms. When he finally hit the water, there wasn't a single feather left attached. Daedalus landed as quickly as he could on the beach near where Icarus had fallen, but the only sign of his poor child was a few feathers floating in the waves. Daedalus crumpled to the sand, his face in his hands for he knew that his son is dead. After many months, when Daedalus began to recover from his grief, he named the island where he landed Icaria in memory of his son. On the beach where he landed, he built a temple to the sun god Apollo and inside it hung the wings he had created, vowing never to fly again. <clears throat> So the moral of the story is always listen to your elders because they usually uh, know better than you, usually. And maybe it's a stronger clue when you want to escape from a prison. Okay, so that's all from me. Thank you for your attention. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.